Guys, welcome to another video from nzpocketguide.com. It's the largest travel guide to New Zealand and we kind of are the expert of traveling in New Zealand. However, with the current event right now, it's a little bit hard to travel around and to actually experience traveling. So we thought we'd come up with a cool idea of what you can do at home because a lot of people were either planning to travel into New Zealand or had to postpone their trip to New Zealand and we all feel like we still want to get ourselves a little bit of a slice of New Zealand. Yeah, so we came up with this idea to do the 10 ways to explore New Zealand from home. All right, so on number 10, we are having a uh, watching a uh, documentary from the BBC, which is called, if I'm recalling correctly, New Zealand's Earth Mystical Islands. It's a series of documentaries about the stunning and unique wildlife which is available uh, for seeing in New Zealand. It's quite amazing the amount of wildlife that you can get to see in the country and it goes through a lot of like the um, uh, wildlife available like in the forest kind of uh, some some really unique parrots birds yeah. and you know the kiwi birds as well and, and also some epic uh, marine wildlife as well as birds 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 and more birds <laughs> yeah. i mean it's, it's that's new what zealand. new zealand's about yeah. yeah and it's a it's a documentary from the bbc so all the footage is just absolutely stunning yeah and also it's a good way to check out some of the new zealand scenery as well because obviously all the filming is in the forests of new zealand or on the coasts and yeah it's a good place to actually just you know it gets you excited for coming to new zealand to see some of that scenery and and really good footage of of the famous New Zealand scenery so yeah all right so on number nine we have uh, something it's a little bit self-promotion right here but um, we actually came up with the idea of that video through a live session that we were having right here on YouTube uh, with some of our readers so we are um, the writers behind a website called uh, nzpocketsguide.com and there is a link to this website in the description of this video and this is basically the largest travel guide to New Zealand and it's completely free to use you just go to www.nzpocketsguide.com and you'll be able to uh, you know have access to I think 2,500 or 3,000 articles to help you plan this trip and we do live sessions like that on YouTube every single week and we answer all your questions about traveling in New Zealand and uh, this week we actually had someone that you know was talking about things to do being stuck at home and everything like that and if you're watching this video later on you may not be stuck at home and it's great you still may want to experience New Zealand or may want to plan your trip now because we all have a ton of time on our hands um, you know it may be the best time to actually plan a trip to New Zealand because a lot of people they just think oh I want to go to New Zealand they just book a flight and then you know about two weeks before they're like oh what am I gonna do and where am I gonna go and and all that right so right now you have a lot of lot of time on your hands so you can actually start planning yeah. and the best place to plan is, is our website I, I hate to say it like that but <laughs> it is we really have a lot of info yeah and I mean there is like Robin says thousands of articles on there so if you do have the time right now and you're stuck at home it's a good time to actually start reading through all those articles and we kind of have it set up in, in a way in the website to show you like you know once you start reading one article there's loads of articles connected to that subject so you find yourself sort of going down a, a wormhole of um, of all New Zealand stuff on there so yeah you'll probably find yourself killing definitely a few hours going through all the information on there and you'll probably come like learn some stuff that you weren't even thinking about um, happening in New Zealand and it's sort of better to be a little bit prepared and um, before you arrive rather than you know getting here and realizing oh, oh crap uh, what is an f post machine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and what I, why actually we hear a lot of the time is that it helps you plan a very unique to you trip because there is so much content. You will find, you know, something that is really kind of tickles your interest and not just, you know, a, a standard tour of like yeah. everybody does the same thing. So it's kind of cool that way. And we do it with a lot of passion. And again, there is no, we know, I know it's self-promotion because we write the website, but it's free to use so you can go on it and there is not going to be a paywall. You're not going to have to pay us anything for that. So go and plan your trip to New Zealand. That was our number nine. Number eight. Number eight is on this list, play a Kiwi related board game. 
So there is a lot of board games out there, right? There is a ton of them. So from the most popular ones like Scrabble, which has a Kiwi version, which basically includes Kiwi words like Kiaora or, or Chur or anything like that. There are there are a few slang words. Yeah, they yeah. are they are included and you you know they count as words. Um, there is Monopolies, which you have the Auckland version, the New Zealand version, those kind of things. Um, there is also some. Uh, kind of quiz games watch what one or kiwi 101 was it yeah was it's it called i think it's called like discovery um it's made from a, com a company called discovery and um it's yeah it's just a kiwi quiz so you have lots of little cards with uh, trivia questions about new zealand on and yeah it's a good way to sort of i don't know learn a little bit about new zealand as well through playing a game but there is a game that I really, really do like, and it's called Timeline. The reason why I like this game is because it's a game you can make at home right now. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's really quick. So you just take a pen and you take about 10 small pieces of paper. On one side of the piece of paper, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm actually going to do it. Right <laughs> it's now. happening. He's making so, the game yes. right now. <laughs> so it's that quick, right? So. You're going to decide on a, a point of data that you're interested in. So, for example, let's say you're going to decide um, how south is a place, right? So, for example, I'm going to write Milford Sound. So, Milford Sound is just on this piece of paper right here. And then on the back, I'm going to write, for example, it's the 10th most uh, southern and then it is like i don't know 79 degrees south uh, it's not that right but you know and then you write your point of data so out of my list is going to be the 10 southern and it's 79 um south so you're going to do 10 different one like this one right and you're going to have all those pieces of paper and you're going to scramble them a little bit and you place them on the table so your partner or the other person you play with or your kids or anyone they will actually have the name of all those places and then you need to you need them to place all those um, piece of paper in order so for example from the northern to the southern or you can do New Zealand mountains and do from the tallest to the smallest or the population size of a of a town for instance exactly yeah. or the uh, animal species from the biggest population of this animal to the rarest one for example like the Maui dolphin there is only about 25 left so that's going to be the least um, you know endangered yeah. to like the weta uh, insect yeah. yeah to the most endangered to the weta insect where there is a lot of them which you know it's it's there's going to be the most and so you have to place them in order and so every time you place one you're like okay i'm going to lock this one in and then you're going to check and it's kind of like oh you know you were looking for number six and this one is number 10 so you know you kind of like you put yeah. it away and, and they're wrong you know and um and you can play that way you can do it with anything you can you can play like one time we did one harry potter with laura it was kind of like which character appears the most on camera uh, throughout all the movies you know so um so yeah so this is a really fun game to play it's a very easy game to play and it costs nothing to play so yeah exactly i think it's a really fun kind of game to play to get to know new zealand better when you plan your trip so the the, the one i like the most i think is to put all your points of interest and all the things that you guys want to see in new zealand and then you kind of find one topic you know i don't know how much it costs to do the attraction for example yeah Just maybe something. you can do like the most expensive exactly. new zealand attraction to the cheapest or something yeah so yeah. i think it's quite fun yeah um uh, aside from that there are some board games also that features new zealand, char new zealand characters yeah so there's a there's a board game called sentinels of the multiverse oh well, it's not a board game it's a card game and you have different superheroes and one of the superheroes in the card game is a new zealand superhero he's called hacker and he's a, like a big um, like strong Maori dude so it's quite cool to have like different yeah. sort of yeah aspects of New Zealand in this board game so yeah he's a Maori warrior and if you guys don't know what what uh, Maori is uh, Maori are, is actually the indigenous population here in New Zealand they have a strong Polynesian heritage and uh, yeah it's a vivid and amazing culture to experience when you travel around yeah. New Zealand Oh yeah, number so, seven. Number Whoopsie. seven. <laughs> so you can play uh, New Zealand bird songs while doing yoga. Yeah, so uh, if you're doing any exercise at home or any yoga, uh, you know, I know that everybody, when you get stuck at home for a wee while, you kind of want to exercise in some ways, and everybody is playing music. Um, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos or anything like that, people actually playing like 80s music when doing the exercise, like yeah. they're all like Jane Fonda style exercise <laughs> video, and I think it's quite funny. 
But um, you could do it while playing New Zealand bird songs because they're quite fascinating. Yeah, so New Zealand, um, they New Zealand's like main sort of wildlife on land are birds. Um, you probably all know about the kiwi birds, but there's actually loads and loads of different species of birds that actually make some pretty crazy noises. Um, for instance, the tui is really no, well known for the crazy sounds that it makes. It kind of sounds like, um, is it R2-D2 yeah, um, yeah. of Star Wars? Beep, 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 so beep, yeah, beep, like the... So there's really interesting bird sounds and on YouTube you can actually find long videos of them just playing um, bird sounds and songs from New Zealand and they're very me very melodic and really nice so if you're looking to get that sort of outdoors feel while you're doing your yoga session or whatever then that's, that's another way to experience New Zealand that way. All right. Okay, so for number six, we have uh, learn a few words in Te Reo Māori. What is Te Reo Māori, Laura? So that is the language of the Māori culture. Like Robin says, that's sort of the, the native um, people of New Zealand, and they do have their own language. And as you're traveling around New Zealand, a lot of the place names around the country are Māori names. So it's a good idea to sort of learn how to pronounce some sort of Māori sounds and words before coming to New Zealand, so that when you arrive here and you're saying, oh, I'm looking for this place you kind of know a little bit better how to pronounce it than you know so if you're saying it to a local and they're like what are you what are you saying like you know you can pronounce it properly and it, it feels good <laughs> so for example the uh, wh is actually pronounced f mm. so so you know that would be fanganui rather than wanganui there is obviously some um, older white New Zealander which like to pronounce it in like the English way, but most people will pronounce it the Maori yeah. way. So it's kind of good to be able to kind of be understood on the go. I think that's that's quite cool. Yeah, and we do have an article as well on nzpocketguide.com, which is um, a few basics of um, of Tirio Maori. So that's a good place to start. But also on YouTube, you know, there's plenty of videos to teach you the basics as well. So yeah, you are in the, on the best place to waste time right now. You're on YouTube, so you know. <laughs> yeah. you sweet <laughs> all right so moving on to number five speaking of having a lot of time to watch things what about the lord of the rings yeah so uh, <laughs> the lord of the rings is quite long but uh, if you don't know already uh the lord of the rings was the the movie the trilogy was filmed in new zealand and a lot of amazing new zealand landscapes are featured in those films so yeah, that's a good way to transport yourself to New Zealand while you're actually just sat at home. Um, and yeah, so what you can do is you can sort of watch The Lord of the Rings and then find out where to actually see some of those locations once you arrive in New Zealand. And we do have an article on nzpocketguide.com uh, listing the 21 New Zealand locations where The Lord of the Rings was filmed. And you can even, while you're watching The Lord of the Rings, um, have that article up so you know exactly which place that is featured in the films and it's always feels better to go and actually go to those locations once you've actually yes. seen it on the movies and then you can sort of visualize it a bit better yeah I, i'm not afraid to uh, to admit that i did not see the Lord of the rings before i arrived in new zealand so i went to some of the locations without having been there and then after watching the movies and revisiting them you kind of picture them differently yeah. it's really cool so watching the movies with the this article on the phone is really kind of fun so yeah, yeah. so all you got to do is to go on nzpocketguide.com and then you just type lord of the rings in the search bar and you'll find the article super easily mm -hmm. so here you go that was number five moving on to number four is quite an interesting one so uh, on number four you can connect with some kiwis do you want to explain that so yeah so there is um there is this theory that says that you will have uh, about six different uh, what is it called? Level of connections? Uh, six degrees. Oh, yes, yeah. six degrees. There is six degrees of connection between you and any other human on the planet. So there is six degrees of connection between you and I, for example, or you and Laura. So uh, an interesting uh, experiment to do will be to try, uh, you know, for example, going on your Facebook account and asking if any of your friends know anyone that could know anyone that live in New Zealand. And if you go that, that way, maybe someone's going to give you a lead and then you can connect with this person and ask them if they could know someone in New Zealand. And going down that kind of a human tree and trying to connect with, uh, with people in New Zealand. And because everybody at the time of us recording this video is kind of bored at home, if you're watching this video a few years down the track, they may not be bored at home, but they may still be intrigued in connecting with someone from the other side of the world. You may want to try to connect with someone and maybe you'll be able to Zoom or Skype with someone from New Zealand and, you know, 
ask about their culture, chat about uh, their land and just kind of connect with someone from New Zealand. And I think that's something that, well, especially right now, since we all kind of stuck at home, but, you know, in a general sense in life, I feel like we kind of, you, we really kind of really disconnected from people. We were through phones and this and that, and we never really having discussion with with people. So I think like the, the fact that you kind of can sit down and chat with someone about New Zealand is kind of, um, rare and that's actually that's the, the genesis behind us doing our live session every Sunday um, so we do we every Sunday at 8 a.m. New Zealand time uh, we literally sit down on our couch right here and we answer people's questions about New Zealand and we do that all the time just because you never really can ask things to people like we, we write this massive travel guide on New Zealand most of the time we say just look at the travel guide Go. and it's kind of like well you know what one hour a week we're going to sit down and do that. And we've been doing that for over a year and a half yeah. now. And, and it works really well. And I feel like we connect with people quite often. And I think that it's a great way to learn about the culture. So trying to work these six degrees of connection to meet someone from New Zealand, I think would be really cool to do right now if you have some time on your hands. Yeah. I don't really have much to add to that. but <laughs> Okay, sorry. I, I, I just agree. <laughs> I just thought that was a really cool thing to yeah, do. Yeah, no, that is cool. So, next on the list, we have number three, which is read um, a, a book about New Zealand. Um, and the one that I recommend is Woman in the Wilderness by Miriam Lancewood. Um, there's quite a lot of uh, news books about New Zealand, but this one's, this one's pretty cool and um, easy to read. It's about this Dutch lady that ended up actually living in the New Zealand wilderness, i.e. she was just, she was hunting for her own food and, you know, hunting and gathering, like, pretty archaic stuff, but it really gets your imagination running for, like, seeing some of the awesome New Zealand wilderness. Um, and, yeah, that's pretty much what the book's about. And they also, um, her and her partner do the Te Araroa Trail, which is the huge um, walking trail that goes from the tip of the North Island all the way to the South Island and you get to read um, obviously about New Zealand as she's traveling through doing this huge hike um, it's just a really interesting book about New Zealand so yeah you were talking about a lot when uh, about it a lot when you were reading it yeah you really loved that book, I did yeah? really like it I, it's definitely one of the best books I've read about New Zealand so far so I definitely definitely recommend it all right so moving on to number two Cook some New Zealand food. Prepare a kiwi feast for whoever you are stuck in lockdown with. Prepare them an awesome kiwi meal. Yeah, so um, there's a few sort of traditional New Zealand foods. Um, and one one thing you could do is sort of, uh, uh, for this meal that Robin's talking about, like do some like starters, which could be um, some kiwi onion dip. So this is basically sort of like condensed milk mixed with some onion powder that you use like onion. You can get onion powdered soup from the supermarket. And this is a really popular thing to do in New Zealand. You mix it with this condensed cream or condensed milk. I'm not quite sure which one it is, but it comes in a can. And um, yeah, and then you use that as your dip. Um, and to dip in that, you could make um, sweet potato fries. Yep. There's a type of sweet potato in New Zealand called kumara. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you don't have access to, uh, if you're at home, you know, before you've come to New Zealand and you don't have access to Kumara, the next best thing would be sweet potato. Yeah, sweet potatoes, yeah. Yep, yeah, and you can, um, yeah, fry that in the oven. Well, not fry that, bake it in the oven. And then, um, yeah, you can use that as your dip for starters. Uh, do you want to talk about the mains? Yeah, so for the mains, <laughs> what about you grab yourself a piece of New Zealand lamb that you will be able to find in many supermarkets around the world. Um, so you could have that. You can also have some deep fried bread on the side um which is yeah quite quite famous uh in it's New a Zealand popular stuff. maori yeah. dish <laughs> yeah um and uh, and yeah steam a few vegetables that goes along with it and that would be a really cool very kiwi main um for sure there's also uh, some really awesome shepherd's pie that they do in new zealand so if you're more into a pie you can do a shepherd's pie um so uh yeah you can do those things they're, they're pretty easy thing to do but that could be kind of a fun kind of kiwi dinner um and for dessert we got a couple of options for you so i'm gonna i'm gonna give you one uh the lazy one will be a deep fried kiwi fruit it's amazing it's seriously really 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 good and you sprinkle some uh, some sugar on top of it and it's really awesome yeah. but um there is a more fancy one you can yeah do. if you if you have time in your hands you could make yourself a pavlova which is basically a meringue cake um all made out of meringue and then you 
you put whipped cream on it and different um, fresh fruit, whatever you prefer. But yeah, pavlova is kind of like the staple dessert in New Zealand, um, although Australians will probably tell you different. There's a bit of a rivalry on who came up with <laughs> but the pavlova. Wrong, so okay. <laughs> but uh, New Zealand, uh, yeah, they're very proud to say that pavlova was invented in New Zealand and uh, yeah that's something we do have a recipe on how to make that on nzpocketguide.com so we have um, recipes of traditional New Zealand uh, dishes we also have um, recipes on the kiwi dip I mean it's not really much of a recipe <laughs> but um, and also the kumara fries and that sort of thing that we've already mentioned we have on NZ Pocket Guide so go and have a look on there to see how to make it for yourself yeah and decorate the, the table with a little bit of you know some flags of New Zealand <laughs> or some yeah. some New Zealand sceneries and everything you can you can make it look kind of cool and uh, I think that could be quite quite something fun to do yeah all right uh, number one <laughs> number one right here is is the watch New Zealand's biggest gap year so uh, about a few years ago Laura and I decided to to challenge ourselves to something absolutely epic and we called that New Zealand's biggest gap year the challenge was to tackle 365 activities all around New Zealand in only 365 days. It was absolutely massive. It's probably the biggest undertaking that we've ever done in our lives. We went all around the country seeking some of the most popular activities but also some of the most hidden gems of the country and for an entire year we packed our entire life in the camper van and traveled around from places to places. We filmed everything and we have videos for every single one of the days. In fact, there is my days when we did more than one activities to catch up for some days when you know our cabin van went completely nuts or break my arm or nonsense <laughs> yeah. that happens it is a whole year yeah. so some things you know don't go quite to yeah. plan throughout the year exactly yeah. so you can see a lot of things that happened which don't go according to plan but mostly what you see is some of the most epic things you do in the country and we really try to make this whole video series not about us but about New Zealand. So we're very factual and it's a, it's a very different style than what you usually see through a blogger, right? A blogger will go more about feelings and about those kind of things. We're very much factual. So it definitely doesn't suit every audience, but it's an amazing way to go through almost everything that there is to do in New Zealand and I know it's a little bit more uh, self-promotional but if I am to think about any ways to experience New Zealand while being stuck at home having like hours and hours and hours of content going through the whole country alongside with us I think is genuinely um, and I know it's a bit biased but I feel like it's genuinely one of the best way to experience New Zealand and in fact we're gonna conclude this video with just one of the trailer video for that series it's pretty epic and you can find the playlist on this channel and uh, it starts on day one and finish on day 365 it's pretty epic and watch the trailer Oh, my God.